genetic testing has really changed our approach to cancer. Personalized cancer medicine means the right patient with the right drug at the right time. And that's really an interface of how can we develop a roadmap for patients um, based on host characteristics, so patient characteristics, tumor characteristics, or so perhaps the genetic makeup or the proteins that are being expressed, and then the appropriate medicine that will take both of those factors into case. We've made significant progress over the past decade in really cataloging some of the genetic changes that we see when cancer occurs. So there are particular mutations that may make someone more susceptible to developing cancer. There are other mutations that, when detected in the tumor, um, cause a dysfunction of a particular protein for which we've developed drugs for. Personalizing therapy is looking for these markers in tumors, so understanding is there a protein that's overexpressed, is something malfunctioning that may make chemotherapy or targeted therapy more effective, and then really finding the right dose for the patient, finding um, the appropriate setting to give those agents in. Often patients undergo genetic testing if they have a family history of cancer. And so this kind of genetic testing is looking to see if there's a germline mutation. So that's a mutation that you inherently have and that may predispose you to a particular cancer. And that's relevant for people who have um, families in which cancer has been prevalent. The reason we want to know is to understand if we can screen or do preventative measures to decrease the likelihood of developing cancer. The other big area in which cancer um, genetic testing has taken hold and really shaped how we approach treatments is um, looking for particular mutations that drive cancer. Now, we know that mutations are ubiquitous in cancer. That's really how cancer forms. But what we're looking for are a particular signature of mutations or a particular driving mutation that may cause the cancer. Some cancers are more, more commonly are marked by particular mutations than others. So in lung cancer, we know that particular mutations in EGFR or ALK which are present only in the tumor cells can cause the cancer to grow. And often the most appropriate initial therapy for those patients is an oral um, small molecule inhibitor of, of those proteins. So there are multiple ways we can use testing. In some cancers, it's important to understand if, um, if there is a prevalence of mutations and, and in some cancers, it is standard of care to get mutational testing. In other cancers, we don't understand as much about the genetics or the um, prevalence of these particular mutations, or mutations that we can target is quite low. And that genetic testing may be done as part of a larger clinical trial or as a research effort. The other piece of testing that um, changes therapy for patients is the detection of particular proteins on, on their cancer. So we want to understand how we can find out which genes are the most important to target and which ones may be driving the cancer. Another effort that we're all making is to understand if we can find in the serum or in the blood particular proteins that are expressed or fragments of DNA that also may correlate with treatment outcome. So it may be that when someone has cancer, we're able to detect particular proteins when the cancer has been effectively treated, either, either with surgery or immunotherapy or chemotherapy, that that fraction of proteins goes down and we can monitor, the, monitor them over time. Right now, when we look to see if patients have disease recurrence, we do it with a CT scan or a PET scan or an MRI. And although those tests are wonderful, Generally, if we can see something, it's more, um, it, it's hundreds of thousands of cells. We're now thinking about looking at cancer as really a, a needle in a haystack, using tests not only from the blood, but from the urine, from the serum, to, um, to really um, treat cancer earlier, to detect cancer earlier, and we believe strongly that that will lead to better outcomes.
when a patient first meets a cancer care team, I think it's important um, to have shared decision making. So that means that the patient and physician need to understand um, exactly what stage of cancer it is, um, to understand if there are particular um, genetic determinants of prognosis um, that may impact our first and initial therapy or the likelihood of response. But then to take this information and really center it around what is important to you. The world of personalized cancer therapy is evolving rapidly. Um, you can find out more about this field on cancer.net.